こんにちは。私はサイです。よろしくお願いします。お元気ですか Close enough. Bear with me, okay? Guys, I've been studying Japanese now for around six to eight weeks, somewhere in that region, and I wanted to fill you in and make a little video on how I've been studying from scratch, completely from scratch. Never tried to learn Japanese before, even though I've been to the country a couple of times for like two week holidays at a time. I never fully really tried to learn the language beyond being able to say arigato and、uh, konnichiwa and like little things like that. I never really learned anything beyond that.、Um, whereas now, well, in two weeks, I am moving to Japan for a full year, for a full 12 months. So I want to learn a little bit. I want to use this time to learn and speak Japanese, be able to take in a little bit more of the culture than when I previously visited. So in this video, I wanted to break down what I've been doing to learn Japanese completely self taught so far. Now, of course, I've only been studying for a few weeks, so I'm not by any means an expert, but for me, this is what's been working well, and I want to explain like, why I think it's been working well for me, and maybe some of these tips and pieces of advice might work well for you. So, I normally stream、uh, like Final Fantasy XIV on a different channel, and so a lot of my viewers are also really interested in. Figuring out how I'm learning Japanese because some of them are also interested in learning as well. So that's also why I wanted to make this video. So, what I've been doing is I've been starting out probably where most people start, which is realkana.com, where you can learn hiragana and katakana. You can learn all of your kana、uh, in one nicely little assembled place. You can test yourself with flashcards、uh, very easily and you can practice what you know. Um, in a nice convenient location. So, this is what I started with. And the goal was to learn hiragana and katakana as quickly as possible to sort of just get in the rhythm of learning. I found for me, even on days where I was like,、oh, I'm not too bothered about learning today, just having the consistency and the motivation, or well, I guess sort of the dedication to keep studying every day, even just five, ten minutes at a time, was really what came in handy for me to be able to pick these up quite quickly. So, I learned all of my kana within a few weeks, maybe three weeks, where I just learned between five and ten characters per day. The really nice, convenient thing with this、uh, in learning Japanese is there are like three different scripts. Okay, you've got your hiragana, which is, I guess, for your like classical like Japanese words and sentences. And then you have katakana, which is for a lot of foreign. Borrowed words, so anything that Japan will borrow from Western cultures and stuff, for example, hamburger, things like that, karanda, that kind of stuff, it'll be in katakana. And you can actually, once you've figured out all the, or you've learned katakana, you can actually read things. For example, my friend who was helping me learn Japanese a little bit because he's fluent. He was giving me advice and he linked me. Once he saw that I had learned on my katakana, he linked me like a McDonald's menu. And I was able to decipher things like sides, meal,、um, you know, read actually what's, what the burger and the food is and that kind of thing, which sounds pretty trivial. You know, you go into McDonald's, you point, you go, that one, that one.、Um, but I think it's important to just be able to understand like, what you're actually getting. And be able to give yourself a bit more choice. That's ultimately what this is going to be about over the course of the year that I'm there is getting more choice and having a little bit more freedom and being able to express what I actually want rather than being a headless chicken and trying to order and going, I don't really know what my options are. So, Katakana is really great for that because you can already sort of start learning or already start understanding and deciphering the language. Just by learning Katakana to some degree. So that was really, really helpful. Now, I didn't just use this, this Real Kana website. I also looked to use this YouTube channel, which I found, which was really, really helpful. It's Learn Japanese with Japanese Pod101.com, which is a really long YouTube name, but okay. It's got 3 million subscribers. So you probably know of it already, but it's really good. It gives you the、um, symbol, it gives you like font variation, which I've actually found is really helpful because sometimes trying to understand things when it's in a different font is actually a little bit more complex.、Um, and sometimes you can get some characters confused. That's what I found at least. But then it also gives you a way of trying to remember. It gives you like an image or some kind of association tool to link that character with something that links with its pronunciation. This one's a little bit of 
I mean, this has never really helped me, and particularly the UFO, but for some it might be fantastic. So I've also been using this. This is really awesome because it's all of the hiragana in one hour, and then there's another video which is all the katakana in one hour. Now, I wouldn't advise learning all like 90 characters or whatever it is in one in two hours, but five to ten per day going through it, looking through them each day and reviewing what you learn and then picking up five new ones is how I, I found this was so was most effective. I really like this as well, the combination of YouTube videos because it helps with your pronunciation. That's obviously something that's incredibly important when you're learning a language is not just being able to sort of understand it, but able to actually sound like you're as close to being native as possible. So getting the actual correct intonation is very important. So I found listening to someone speaking Japanese is also really helpful and it's cheaper because it's free than having to get like a private tutor or something like that. So that's what I've been doing for my initial hiragana and katakana. Now I haven't started learning kanji yet. Kanji is like, for those that don't know, it I think it originates from Chinese symbols and characters and then also is now mixed with Japanese characters and, and uh, symbols as well. And it's way more complex than hiragana and katakana in my opinion because you can't like sound it out. You have to know what it is. Whereas uh, with Hiragana and Katakana, you can learn these characters and then you can sound out these words and you can break things up. And even if you then Google it for a translation, you, you can, you know, somewhat know some of some of what it might be saying. Whereas with Kanji, it's like you you have to know it and you have to know the correct pronunciation of it. And that's it. So and there's thousands of them. There's not 48 or 96, whatever the math works out with with Kana. There's thousands of them. So that's something that I want to start on soon. Um, but I haven't started on it yet, and I'm actually finding that I wish I'd started learning kanji earlier. A lot of people say, like, or I, some people say, don't worry about learning kanji like immediately. But I find for me, I'm trying to learn example sentences, and I'm struggling because I can read a little bit of kana, and then there's kanji, and then a little bit of kana, and then there's kanji again, and I can't actually get any meaning because I'm missing very important aspects um, uh, of the sentence. So that's something that I want to be trying to learn now. So this here is Jisho. This is another tool that I've been using that's been super handy. It's basically like an online dictionary and it functions as one, but it's got a few cool little extra features. So you can actually use this to draw certain characters. So maybe you've seen something, but you don't know how to express it. Maybe it's kanji and you don't know how to like type that in. Um, I guess you could try Googling it, but you can also actually draw things as well, which is really, really nice. So say for example, I wanted to draw a character, say like she, and then it will jump up and I can go, oh yeah, it was that one. And then you can you can use this and you can type with this. And uh, if you really want to, you can figure out what it means. You can type words in and you can uh, find out what things mean. So if I wanted to find out the word for like calendar, for example, I can figure out the spelling. Um, it gives you a description and everything. So it's just like a nice online dictionary, which is really, really helpful. And I've been using it um, very frequently. So this has been really, really awesome to, to like check any words that I'm un unaware of. Um, now, another tool that I've been using is this 300 words in 30 days challenge. I haven't been doing it like every single day religiously, but I'm getting there. So I'm doing like 10 words a day in the build up to me going to Japan because these are apparently like 300 very common words used in Japan. So what I like doing is, uh, so you have Risa here who actually gives you the word, gives you the kanji, gives you the kana, and then gives you the pronunciation and then tells you the meaning, which is really helpful for learning just vocabulary and building up a vocabulary now that I know all the kana. And also she gives example sentences, which I find is very helpful because it it's you're sort of learning that word and then you're also learning additional grammar and things on top of it, which is really, really nice. So for example, I can look at this sentence and then I can try and piece things together based on my other knowledge. So Kayobi is Tuesday and then Raishu is uh, next week. So Raishu no Kayobi and I can go, ah, I think that is going to be like, you know, uh, next week on Tuesday or uh, Tuesday next week, right? And then you get the answer. And this is really, really handy because like I say, I get to learn the word in question and then also give it some context to um, like where you'd actually use it in real life situations. So this is really, really, really helpful. And this is what I'm currently working on. And I think this is going to really properly prepare me for um, listening and sort of speaking 
some reading in Japan. So this is awesome. And the last tool that I really, really like is Anki. Anki is fantastic. This is basically an online flashcard tool. You can input what you have to input words yourself. So you have to be a little bit proactive, but what it will do is it will allow you to form different decks. So you can maybe have a deck fully on Kanji, uh, one that's fully on Kana and different words in, in Kana. Um, or you can kind of combine the two, however you like, but this is really good because it prompts you. And I think sort of uses actual correct learning techniques that people find helpful. So it won't prompt you to learn or, or to go through every single word in your deck every single day because that would get exhausting. But it prompts you each day with words that it thinks that you need to learn uh, and keep revisiting more regularly. And words that you start to like get really, uh, like you start to learn really, really well, it doesn't prompt you with as much. So for example, here I can go with the study and let's see what we get. So we get uh, Rai, uh, Rai Nen, Rai Nen. So I know Rai is, I believe, next, and then Nen is, I think it's next year? Next year, fantastic. So that was fairly easy for me. So I can click easy on this and it won't test me on this for a little while, right? If I got it wrong, then I could click again and then it will shuffle it back in the deck and it will test me on it and again in a few minutes. So this is a fantastic tool. I really like Anki. I found that it's been um, good for getting me in the groove of like proactively studying. So this has been really, really helpful. For, for me so far, the biggest things that I've been, uh, I've found improving on is just or like helping me improve has been the YouTube channels, being able to listen to correct pronunciation, get some example words and sentences and just naturally sort of progress and learn new things very quickly, very easily. You can, you know, be on your morning commute, you can be on the bus, train, whatever. And uh, you can just watch a quick five, 10 minutes of some Japanese, try and revisit it the next day and you can just pick things up as you go. So this has been really, really helpful. The only thing so far that I've not really been learning in a great fashion is the grammar. As you saw maybe in my intro, I gave you what I think is potentially a correct way of saying the things that I wanted to say, but I don't know that anyone would actually speak that way in Japan in day-to-day -day conversation. So that's something that really, I think you're only gonna properly learn when you're watching a lot of media, like anime and, TV shows and stuff in Japanese, or when you actually visit the co uh, the country physically. So that's my next step, is going there in two weeks. Um, but this is all the information I have. I also picked up this book as well. It's an N5, uh, I think it's Genki, um, is the name of the of the textbook. It's really quite handy. It's 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 a fairly reasonably like priced book. It's like cost me like 20 pounds or something like that. It's got a lot of really good like example uh, sentences. It's got a lot of like words you can test yourself on. It gives you the translation. It gives you uh, examples. It's really quite a, a good book. Um, and it gets you to the N5 level, which I believe is like a certain sort of standard qualification of being at a certain level of Japanese understanding. So a lot of people, I think, use this book to get them up to that point because maybe they're studying at uni, uh, Japanese and whatnot. For me, it's been helpful, but I haven't, it's not been my favorite tool. For me, I found that I learn best through listening and like being sort of taught by someone. So for me, YouTube videos are being uh, are fantastic. I really, really like the YouTube videos, whereas looking through a book is less effective for me personally. But I think if you learn via a book, this is a really great one to get. So I'll link all this information that I've had in a pinned comment down below. If any of this is useful, uh, let me hear it. And if uh, you have any other suggestions on things and tools, devices I can use, let me know in the comment section. That'd be very, very helpful in my study. And apart from that, please give the channel a follow. If you if you give it a subscription, uh, you know, if you like and subscribe, helps promote the video, helps me get more followers, which is really, really helpful. Let me know in the comments as well what other videos you'd like to see in the lead up to my visit to Japan. Um, just two more weeks now, so not too long. Thanks for watching. Take care.